What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be doing a very different video. In fact, I will be teaching you how to use FL Studio. So let's get right into it. Um, obviously this tutorial is for beginners because I'm a beginner myself and I only started producing for seriously for seven months. And when I started last year, I pretty much tried using the software for a week. So you go into FL Studio and this is what you find, a blank page of stuff with a lot of buttons yeah uh, as you guys can see it is separated into the a few things I think this is a default setting but yeah but uh so here we can find a uh, playlist and a channel rack and this mixer here so right now I'm gonna explain what all these three do okay um so the playlist is basically where you uh, arrange your music. Uh, for example, this one, pattern one, and then we can make a pattern two or pattern three. And for example, like that, you can just lay it out here and you can basically put it where, wherever you want. And this is basically where it plays your music. And until it plays to the end, it's going to loop straight back to the front. Uh, so yeah, that's the playlist pretty much, and you can also use um, things like uh, audio. For example, I have drums here in the pack section, and you click kicks, and we can add a kick, for example, like this, and we get the a drum pattern, and you can just arrange your drums here as well. Uh, so um, and you can also have automation clips, which you probably don't know right now, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to leave that to another tutorial because this is beginner's tutorial. And you just need to know the stuff that you need to know. So, the channel rack. So that's pretty much the playlist done. And uh, the channel rack is something that is that houses all your instruments or sounds or yeah or automation clips basically or controllers which you probably don't know yet but it's it's going to be in a future tutorial probably um so um you can put stuff in the channel rack for example synths like citrus and it'll make sounds so basically the channel rack is where all your instruments go the channel rack can also be used to do some stuff like drum patterns. For example, you have a kick pattern here, which I put in the playlist. You hear this, boom, 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 boom. But you can also do that in the channel rack. You see these little buttons here? For example, if I click this, well, this kick and this kick is pretty much the same, but this one comes with the default. Uh, it starts off giving us these four samples uh, as a default. So we could click this. And you can see these dots here in the playlist. Uh, and when you replay it, it's going to be the same thing. Except it's a slightly uh, not as loud. Because if you put the the audio into straight into the playlist like this, then it's going to play at full volume. So right now we get the same thing when we do this. Alright, let me just mention that you can actually add... Uh, add more like you can uh basically you have this which is the first bar and you can see there are a lot of uh buttons here which are also muted and you can just add them along the way but yeah as you may have noticed the channel rack has a few buttons uh excluding these uh we have this the green thing is used to control if something is playing or not. As you can see, there are a lot of green buttons here and green buttons here in the mixer as well. And for example, we have a kick here. Same pattern. If we turn this off, it's not going to play because that's how it works. And if you have it on a channel rack, the same thing is going to happen. You have it. You have the green thing on, it's going to play. Have the green thing off, it's not going to play. So that's... Uh, that applies for every single instrument automation clip and stuff like that. Then you have this thing called a uh, pan button. And this is basically for panning. So what is panning exactly? Panning is 
basically if you hear it on your left ear or your right ear or or which head or the left headphone side or the right headphone side and if i say pan this to the right and if you put on headphones right now you can actually hear it it's only playing on the right side if you have stereo headphones that is and like this it's playing on the left side okay uh so that's basically what panning is but i might go to padding more in depth in the future but it's a more advanced tutorial and this is the volume button as you may see me use earlier so like this quieter and louder quieter louder quieter louder and you can even mute it so basically yeah so that's basically it you see these numbers here on the channel rack it, may, it might look a little intimidating but to be honest it's just it's really not these numbers basically show which uh, mixer channel they're going to, which we're going to get to a second. So, you see this uh, 1 here? So the kick is routed to 1. So if we play this, you can see how uh, insert 1 is playing. And for example, clap, it says 2. And you can see how 2 is playing. And also the master is playing. And if you get 3, uh, you can see insert 3 is playing and so on. But for now, we'll just turn these back to zero and back to mixer, or we just delete it, right click and delete it. Because we really don't need those right now. So, we can route this kick. As you can see, when we're playing it, it's playing in the master because it's not routed to anything. Because the master shows pretty much whatever is playing on the software right now, even the FL Studio intro. Um, so if we route it to 1, you can see it's playing like this. And it's playing on both insert 1 and the master. And that's because insert 1 is routed to the master, which means that what whatever ch uh, channel 1 plays, it's going to be identical to what the master plays. And it's going to give pretty much the identical signal. Um, okay, let's route this citrus thing to channel 2 as you can see uh, if we click in citrus It, it, it starts playing. Okay, um So the another thing about the uh, mixer is that you can actually name these channels if you middle click uh, So like the scroll wheel if you click the scroll wheel You can rename or you can just right click and re rename change color and icon for example we'll, we'll name this 707 kick because that's what this is and we'll name this citrus and you can also change the color so for example red and um, blue for example uh, so basically what this does is it, it kind of helps you get more organized so uh, another thing is effects but you probably won't use it at, uh, very often or at all if you're if you just started uh, using FL Studio. So, um, as you can see on the right hand side, we're in Citrus right now, and we have some effects. Uh, you can, if you're putting on headphones right now, you can hear this. Uh, you can hear that sound, and if we put on effects, for example, reverb, and obviously you know what reverb is, it's it's hard to explain, but it's basically when you're in a room, there's reverb, and if you're in a hall, there's a different kind of reverb. It's basically kind of like an echoey thing, but not exactly an echoey thing. It's like you play something and it extends the signal to... I don't know how to des describe it, but this is basically what it does. So we have a effect here, and we play... Uh, you can hear the note is a lot longer. And that's because we have reverb in it. But when we turn this off, as you see the screen button thing again, it's going to play the thing that we heard before. Uh, so basically, that's what the effect channel effect rack is for. There are actually a lot of effects in FL Studio. So uh, you actually, if you start getting more into producing, you probably use the whole rack. But yeah. Anyways, uh, as you can see in the mixer channel, you have this thing where I said something about routing. If you click this, remove it, and put it into the kick, uh, this means that the citrus thing, uh, so what I play on citrus is going to be going into the kick, and whatever is going to the kick is going to be going to the master. So right now we can see all three of them are playing. 
because this one is going to this one, this one's going to this one. It makes sense. Um, so uh, one thing I actually didn't mention is how the mixer works, okay? You can actually route two instruments into the mixer. Uh, so for example, the kick is on two and the stitch is on two. So when we play the kick, it's going to be on... Oh, wait, let me just route this back to the master first. If we play the kick, it's going to be on two. And if we play the stitches, it's on two. So we have this knob which controls the gain or the decrease in volume. Um, yeah. Basically, that's the mixer. The next part is I'm going to talk about tempo because tempo is something that's really important in music. So up here, we have a few numbers. Right now, it's saying 130. Uh, this is the tempo of the song. So you hear this pattern? If I slow it down, it's going to be really slow. But okay, that's a little too slow. As you can see at the back here, you have a few decimal points. Uh, those actually also change the tempo. But uh, they basically change it very slightly. For example, you could change, scroll it up. So you put your cursor on top of that number and you scroll up and you can change it like this. So like 004. Another way to change the tempo is to click, right click on this. And you have some tempo values you can choose from. Or you can tap, which is I find very useful. So you click tap. And for example, you want to do something like da 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 so just click on your mouse and it will automatically set the tempo for you right there so yeah so last thing I'm gonna go over is the controls if you uh, middle click so like hold the middle click and um, drag the mouse like this you can basically go through your uh, playlist like this and uh, if you press control and scroll, you're going to be uh, stretching it out, stretching the playlist out. And if you uh, press shift scroll, then you can uh, kind of adjust these clips slightly like that. So it goes on tempo like that. And you can also use the scroll wheel to scroll up and down, obviously. Uh, same goes for the channel rack. If you have more, then you can scroll up and down to go through the channel rack. And you can also see how there's audio and you have kick and unsorted, which is uh, the synths and stuff. And if you just click all, then everything will appear up there. Um, scrolling is all, also works on a mixer. It's just going to scroll, scroll right through the mixer. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. And I hope you know a bit more about FL Studio before you start. I personally think FL Studio is one of the best softwares out there. Well, obviously because it looks a lot better than the other uh, DAWs, and you have some really cool f features like fruity dance, for example, and you have this uh, anime thing dancing when you play play the song. You see, it's like freaking dancing, which is amazing. Um, I would say FL Studio is definitely a lot easier to learn than other ones, I think. Uh, it also looks a lot better, so it probably gives you a bit more motivation. And organization just feels a lot easier in FL Studio. So, uh, yeah, that's it for the video. I hope you guys liked it, and I will be making more tutorials, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!